Welcome everybody to Sunday at the Amelia. Here we are on the show field and the excitement is beginning. It's early in the morning. A lot of car owners parked their cars on the field yesterday. Cars are still covered as you can see behind us, but we're here in perhaps the most exciting place on the field at Jeff Gordon's, uh, yep. the class of Jeff Gordon's cars, Jeff being our honoree. I'm here with Justin Bell, noted noted race driver, Le Mans winner, which yeah. is going to be fun because we're going to look at the Le Mans cars. Totally. And uh, what are you thinking? I mean, you ha we've had a great weekend. It's been amazing so far, but of course, it reminds you that every year it reinforces the idea that, that the Amelia is very much a racer's concourse. It's really That's the only right. one that addresses that. And for me as a driver, you know, 20, well, 15 years ago, there might be the odd race car out here. And it stood out, you know, rather like the Englishman in, you know, in a, in a Florida bar. But here, it, you've, it's evolved to literally whole classes of race cars. But with the honoree being such a huge icon of success in the NASCAR world, you know, Jeff Gordon last night, we heard all his stories. So to see his cars, I think it'll be just a, a huge draw for everyone. And it's exciting to have a four-time uh, champion here, yep. a NASCAR champion here too. And here we have a collection of his cars that have been brought from all over the continent, yep. literally. And then we're going to look at Le Mans winning cars. Totally. It's pretty cool to be able to say we're amongst all of that. And then when Jeff arrives, we'll actually get to hear one of these great cars in person operate and shake the ground, which is yeah. cool. You know, when Jeff Gordon's career, it also, when the drivers, whether it was Emerson Fittipaldi, you know, in the past, and Derek, my dad, Derek Bell, you, it's like a kaleidoscope of their careers. And uh, we watched a video last night when you saw the mullet and the moustache. He was trying to look like Dale and, Dale and Hart Senior. But, you know, you look back and the Grand National car behind us, it, it just looks so basic. And NAS, that's the, always been the catchy thing about NASCAR, the brilliance of it. The simplicity of the format yet the complexity of the racing and the in huge investment and return. So it's, it's almost like we see some of the sophisticated race cars, but the NASCARs are the most simple of all. And then you have this Williams behind us, which was the most technologically sophisticated. Crazy, yeah. And when Jeff got in this, uh, and it was a sort of head-to-head -head just for an exhibition purposes, wasn't it? That's correct. It's funny you mention that. I remember watching that as... Uh, I wasn't a kid, but I remember yeah. watching that many years ago when they uh, raced, put Juan Pablo Montoya in a NASCAR stock yeah. car and put Jeff in an F1 yeah. car. And to speak to the, the ability of him as a driver, he got in the F1 car and almost his times were almost Same as, as good as Montoya. JPs, yeah. yeah, which is amazing. And vice and versa. Then, and then Montoya, right. Yeah. And then Montoya ended up in NASCAR, yeah. Yeah, which is kind of ironic. Wild, and not to the yeah. same success, but then <sighs> under there is a USAC Midget car, which really did bring huge success to Jeff. And remember, a California kid from the Bay Area that, that ended up in Midgets was, I mean, as weird and random as me trying to do it, you know, at the time. Uh, but this type of driving really teaches you to be sideways to take a car to the le to the edge of the limits of performance at huge horsepower and no weight that's why these guys get so good and then by the time he joined the Conica Minolta Wayne Taylor racing uh, you know a couple of years ago and then wins the race it's just like these guys do they ever stop it's like they just keep winning in everything they do um, and when you see that car up there the Hendrix Motorsport number 24 DuPont car one of the most iconic liveries, as Ray said, suddenly you have this Californian and a guy from New Jersey turning up in a, in a rainbow colored car, race suit. It, it shook the NASCAR establishment, but everybody knows that paint scheme. I saw jackets yesterday. You know, NASCAR merch sells more than anything else. I think Jeff Gordon made a fortune just off the t-shirts and the jackets. I'm sure he did. You know, did. in sports cars, you're like giving away, you know, t-shirts <laughs> and caps, but here it's a real business. So as soon as people see that livery, they know you know, the Rainbow Rainbow Warrior is on site. And talking about the kinds of things that you get to see here that perhaps you don't get to see elsewhere, obviously we've got a Rainbow Warrior car back here. He was a, a Chevrolet, is, yeah. he's always driven Chevrolets, or we kind of assume, but behind us we have a Pontiac, yeah. which I don't think many people realize he drove a Pontiac in Grand National. It's wild. It's pretty yeah. cool. 
a bit later, well, we're going to hear Jeff drive up in the car and uh, it, it'll certainly rattle the rafters here at the Amelia. But there is so much to see. But if you are on site, make your way down here and check out the Jeff Gordon collection. It is where the honoree always have their cars and I think it's a hot spot. And we'll be back with you in a bit for more car fun.